Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. As you could probably tell from the thumbnail, the video title, and, and the, the video right here, this video is going to be about uh, Toyota Sequoias. This is my 2007 Toyota Sequoia. I just recently bought it and I'm stoked on it. I'm like really, <laughs> honestly really excited about this vehicle. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about kind of why I bought it, why I have it. And then I'm gonna get more into just kind of general features of it, do a little walk around, show you some stuff, tell you, you know, more of why I like it. So if you don't care about me or whatever, I'll put chapters down below. You can skip around to whatever you want. So real quick, as you may have noticed earlier, uh, picked up a new channel sponsor. I've been friends with them for a long time, but Onyx Off-Road. They're a mapping software. You can download it on your iPhone or your Android, use it in the browser. But Onyx, a lot of people are familiar with Onyx Hunt. Basically, it's the ubiquitous de facto mapping software used by hunters ever since hunters started using mapping software, basically. Uh, they, more recently, though it's not new by any means, kind of got more into the off-road space as well with Onyx Off-Road. And I am actually gonna be kind of working with them kind of in a variety of ways. I'm gonna be beta testing some new features, giving uh, developmental feedback, give UI feedback, all that kind of stuff. So cool team over there that I'm gonna be working kind of closely with. They also have like a whole stewardship team uh, which I love, you guys know me, like I hate people leaving trash, very much a leave no trace guy, stay the trail, all that kind of stuff. So they're very much involved in these kind of topics. So hopefully we're gonna be working together on some stuff there as well. I will talk more about a lot of that in future videos. But anyway, new sponsor, Awesome app, a lot of people ask me, how do you find trails? What do you use when you're out on the trail? That kind of stuff. Onyx Off-Road been using for years. I've used a bunch of apps actually, honestly, and Onyx Off-Road is one of them. I'm gonna be using it a lot more, obviously now, as I'm kind of testing new features and mapping out trails and things like that. So we'll get more into Onyx in some future videos. If you have any questions, ask them down below. If you wanna check it out yourself, they actually gave me a coupon code, L-L-O-D, so you can go sign up for the app. Um, it's a paid, it's, it's cheap though. I think it's like 20 or 30 bucks a year or something, but LLD will save you some money there. So use that, sign up, check out the app, and I'll be talking more about the app. So get it now because I'm gonna be talking more about it in the future. Sweet, thanks Onyx. Let me just say real quick, I'm kind of tucked into this corner in my garage is all here. It's kind of out of the wind. I've lived in Colorado for like 12 or 13 years now. I have never seen wind like this that just has lasted for like a month. Uh, basically, there's been a month of suck wind. Like Colorado is very confused. Colorado thinks we're like Wyoming or something. We're not. Colorado, get a hold of yourself because I hate this wind. Anyway, there's some wind in the background. I hate it as much as you. So Ashley and I just got married actually. So we just got back from our honeymoon and this is the first video since we've been back. Hopefully it's the last video in the driveway for a bit because I'm getting kind of tired of these little driveway videos. I'm getting tired of talking about new vehicles. I say that in like a non weird pompous way. I just don't, I just, I just want to keep this fleet of vehicles for a while, build it out and not get anything new. I don't like a whole lot of change. So hopefully this is stable for a while if you're wondering. I have no plans to get any other vehicles for a while, personal vehicles anyway. So this is a 2007 Toyota Sequoia. This is the last year of the first generation of the Toyota Sequoia. Then from 2008 until current is the second gen of Toyota Sequoia. And then just about out is the third gen Toyota Sequoia. So yeah, that's a little, <laughs> a little background on the Sequoia. Sequoia is a big old tree, actually unpopular opinion. I think Sequoias are cooler than the Redwoods even. So if you have a chance to make it out to Sequoia National Park, check it out. Uh, I kind of, I feel like I should take the Sequoia to Sequoia. Maybe I will, I don't know. Which kind of brings me to <laughs> why did I get the Toyota? Sequoia. So I'm kind of known as like a Land Cruiser guy. I have the, I have a 1984, I have a 60 series Land Cruiser. I have a 1997 40th anniversary, 80 series Land Cruiser. And then some of you know, I had a 200 series Land Cruiser. Really it was a Lexus LX570. Absolutely loved that vehicle. So now we're getting into a little bit of story time. So you can skip ahead if you don't care about story time. So I had a 2010 LX570 loved it loved 
that vehicle. Loved past tense. I don't have it anymore. We're getting to that. Just you wait. So then I had that. That was kind of my daily driver. I just wanted just a bomb proof, awesome daily driver. I don't drive a whole lot. I work from home. I don't commute. So I'd like the gas, the fuel efficiency didn't really bother me much because I wasn't driving much. I just wanted something that'd be good in the snow, that'd be reliable, that I could fit a bunch of people. Cause all my other vehicles don't really fit a lot of people because they're all like specialty and customized and seat deleted and everything. So fitting a lot of people, reliable, bomb proof, awesome, love Land Cruisers, love the LX570. Then I was gonna build a house, right? Well, I'm gonna build a house. I'm gonna build a house in a month. That's why I'm not getting any more vehicles for a while because I'm gonna be heads down building a house as fast as I possibly can until it is done. So my fun with building vehicles is kind of coming to an end and then I'm gonna be building a house and then I'm just gonna be adventuring in the vehicle. So I'll still be using the vehicles adventuring, but I'm not gonna be buying any new vehicles. I'm not gonna be building anything up. It'll be like little tweaks and little mods, but so this, the, the fleet will be stable for a while. So anyway, yeah, building a house. So I wanted a, a truck that I could just use as a truck. I was really interested in the Tundra, got the 2022 Tundra, which you guys have probably seen on the channel. So then I had this LX570 that wasn't really filling a need because now the Tundra was my daily driver. I still did want the LX570 because it could it could it could sit a lot of people. It could fit a lot of things. It was a pretty big, it was a third row SUV. It could fit fit seven or eight, um, and I liked that for when I needed to just like move people around. It was like my only vehicle that was just like a normal vehicle that I could loan out to friends or family that were visiting or whatever like that. So this is really dark, but you don't care about seeing my face because this is just story time. So I had that. But it was just too nice to be sitting around. It was too nice. A lot of you guys think I have just like daddy's money or I'm independently wealthy or whatever. And it's not the case. I actually work really hard and I'm not, I'm not super rich. So I can't afford to just have a car sitting around that I never use other than the Land Cruisers. But those are kind of special place in my heart. Those are kind of museum vehicles. But the LX570, too nice, too expensive to be used for how I wanted to use it. So I sold it. Uh, when I sold it, I kind of forgot that my family was coming into town for my wedding. Big family, a lot of kids. I told them they could borrow the, the Lexus because it had three rows and I didn't want to leave them in a bind. So I bought the Sequoia actually to fill that void and to fill a couple other voids. Again, a vehicle that I wouldn't mind lending out to friends or family, kind of a little bit more, falls more into the beater realm, though I certainly wouldn't consider this a beater. I'm not rich enough to consider this a beater, but more of one that I wouldn't care if somebody spilled something or the dog scratched it up or just got a little dirty or a shopping cart ran into it or whatever. The LX570 was still nice enough to where I was concerned about those kinds of things. So that is why I bought a Sequoia. That's why that's kind of like the journey that led me to a Sequoia. Also with the Tundra, if you guys don't know, the Sequoia is based on the Tundra platform, always has been and still is, even to this upcoming third generation of the Sequoia. So basically the Sequoia is the SUV version of the Tundra. Some people think the Land Cruiser is that, it is not. However, the Land Cruiser, the Sequoia, and the Tundra kind of always have shared, and the LX have always kind of shared some parts, like. The engine is pretty much the same. Granted, the Land Cruisers are built to a higher spec. I still think Land Cruisers are way better than Sequoias. Land Cruisers are built to a higher spec, higher standard in Japan. Sequoias and Tundras built in America. Uh, everybody will say the quality of the American built Toyotas isn't as good as the Japanese built Toyotas. But the first gen Sequoias have the 4.7 liter V8 engine kind of uh, known as the million mile engine. There's been a handful of Tundras that have the same engine. Basically, again, this is basically a Tundra, SUV Tundra that have gone a million miles. I don't know if there's been any Sequoias that have done it, but basically same engine, same drivetrain, same everything. So if the Tundra can go a million miles, the Sequoia can go a million miles as well. Tundras, people just usually put more miles on them because they're like work trucks and delivering stuff and putting a lot of miles on them. But anyway, million mile motor, 4.7 liter V8, very bomb proof engine. Then the second generation Sequoia, as well as the second generation Tundra went to the also very loved 5.7 liter V8. Beautiful, great engine. I had that in the LX570. Loved it, very good. And then the third gen, Tundra and Sequoia both going to the uh, 
lot of debate around this engine, the 3.5, kind of a 3.4, twin turbo, and the Sequoia is actually gonna have the hybrid version. So that's kind of some backstory of Sequoias. Land Cruisers were kind of their own beast, but kind of shared some components and some parts. They're kind of a mixture. They're kind of a breed of the Sequoia, but just like, burlier and more overbuilt. So the first gen Sequoia, I think ran from 2001 to 2007, got a little facelift in 2005, uh, got a VVTi five speed from a four speed, gained 30 to 40 more horsepower, and just kind of became a little bit nicer in 2005. So if I was shopping for a first gen Sequoia, I'd probably go for a 2005 and up. It's gonna be a little bit, be most people will say it's a little bit better though. There's some people that, you know, like the older ones, but 2001 to 2007, slight facelift in 2005. They all had the 4.7 liter V8. So they're all very good, good, good engines. Uh, the main thing you wanna look out for, well, is timing belt. You gotta change the timing belt. It's it's a wear component and change them every 100,000 or so miles. A lot of people will say they'll last quite a bit longer than that. But if you change your timing belt, and do you know whatever regular kind of minor routine maintenance you get a million miles out of this engine if you if you take care of it uh, the main issue on these as far as i'm aware is the lower ball joints the lbj's horrible design on the first gen tundra first gen sequoia i believe the third gen forerunner and the first gen tacomas all were kind of plagued by this bad lower ball joint design which can actually completely fail on you and the tire just pops out, very dangerous. So I'm, that's the main bit of maintenance I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be changing the lower ball joints and actually I'm gonna just do the upper ball joints at the same time as well. Other than that, this is a very solid and reliable vehicle. So why would I choose a Sequoia maybe over a 100 series Land Cruiser, right? Cause those are the kind of two things I was showing. I was like my 200 series, a little bit too nice. I can't really, I could get maybe just like a total piece of crap beater that would just be rusted out and falling apart for about the price that I could get a decent 100 series Land Cruiser. So I was looking for kind of more of a beater 100 series Land Cruiser uh, or a first gen Sequoia. So they ran about the same range, uh, year range, and like I said earlier, used basically the same engine. All right, so real quick kind of comparison of the 100 series Land Cruiser and the first gen Sequoia. Like I said earlier, basically the same drivetrain. The Sequoia is a bigger vehicle. It feels much more spacious inside. There's more room behind the third row seats. Has a lot of features that I really like that I'll get into here in a second. Uh, exterior wise, not that much bigger than a Land Cruiser. I think it's like 11 inches longer or something overall. Turning radius, kind of similar. Overall size, driving it kind of similar. This feels about, actually my 200 series Land Cruiser kind of felt bigger than this, honestly, driving it around, even though this is slightly bigger. So this kind of feels, kind of feels small for how big it is. But this is quite a bit cheaper. Up until recently, kind of all used car prices are kind of out of control, especially Toyotas. Uh, but you could have got this car probably two years ago for 5,000 or less. I paid 7,000 for it, 2007, 200,000 miles on it. And it does have a salvage rebuilt title, had some roof damage that was repaired, no leaks, everything is good. I didn't really care about the rebuilt title because I'm planning on keeping this for a while, planning on modding it for a little bit, and honestly kind of planning on beating it up. That's kind of the reason that I bought it. So. $7,000 for this, no real rust on the frame, decently good condition everywhere, no real rust on the body or anything like that. Like pretty, pretty good, pretty good condition overall. You can't really get a 100 series Land Cruiser for $7,000. And if you could get one for, I mean, you kind of can, but if you get one for $7,000, it's just beat to crap. That thing is just, it's a beater, straight up beater. So to get, a 100 series Land Cruiser that's like a similar condition to this, you'd be looking at spending at least probably $15,000. So in Colorado anyway, there's a big there's a big Toyota tax in Colorado. So I was comparing basically spending $15,000 on a comparable 100 series Land Cruiser. And I wasn't really gonna use it for Land Cruiser things. Like I, I have other vehicles that I use for like really hardcore adventures. You know, the Tacoma's kind of that for me. So this was more gonna be like a people mover, a forest road guy, maybe like a cross country trip 
dude, Ashley actually takes like a family camping trip out to a lake in Nebraska a couple times a year, takes her RAV4, always trashes it, always overloads it. She tries to cram too much stuff and too many people in there. So this is gonna be that vehicle for her now. I wanted her to have just a little more grunt, a little more room, a little more storage. So this is gonna kind of be a light camping, kind of, you know, what people would consider a light overland build. So I didn't really need, oh, 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 Land Cruiser for that. And this has a lot more room inside. So it's actually kind of better for what I'm gonna use it for than a 100 series Land Cruiser was. So pay twice for a vehicle that wouldn't do what I want to do as well as the vehicle that's half the price or get the vehicle that's half the price. So that's why I went with the Sequoia. Little bit of backstory there. Time, it's time to take this off the tripod and just show you around. So again, 2007 Toyota Sequoia. This is actually an SR5, but it has a couple, it's optioned up a little bit, has power, leather, heated seats, um, and some other stuff that kind of comes on limiteds typically, but this is an SR5. It's bone, bone, bone stock. No lift, no anything. 25,000 miles. Uh, timing belt looks to have been done within the last 50,000 probably. I don't know if I'm going to do that and kind of just like get this completely dialed or just kind of ride it out for a little bit. Basically, it did come with little steps here that I took off just because I liked the look of it. However, I will tell you plans for it at the end of the video. But for now, I'll just kind of walk you around uh, as is by default. So yeah, I took the steps off. They're actually just right over there. I'm probably gonna put them back on when, when I lift this thing and put some bigger tires on. I did put some Amazon special headlights in because the ones I had were just completely clouded out and actually just like scratched up and chip, like kind of trashed. I don't, I don't really know what happened to them. Amazon special, these things suck. They don't actually adjust how they should. There's some crap, but whatever, they work, they shine on the road. I just put a little yellow film on the fogs, strictly mostly for aesthetics there because uh, it doesn't really give a true amber fog or anything like that. So that's the only thing I've done to this thing so far. So on the outside, it's a pretty big SUV though, like it's an older SUV. So a current gen forerunner is very similar in size to this, I believe. This is like 10 inches, 10 inches longer than a current Gen 4 but way bigger inside. So inside, let's go inside. I'm not gonna pop the hood. Like I, I just, 4.7 liter V8. Uh, okay, I'll pop it for you since people like to see that crap. I don't really, I don't really know why people like to see that on just factory vehicles that don't have any modifications done to them but we'll do it. It does have gas struts under there, which is nice. Here it is, relatively clean in here. Not much to see. I'm probably not gonna do much to it, though these things with exhausts sound pretty sweet. So I, I kinda wanna put an exhaust on it, but I don't know if I will. Maybe swap out the battery at some point. But other than that, everything is pretty, again, pretty basic, pretty stock and totally fine. So let's get inside here real quick and then we'll do a little bit more on the outside. So here we have nice big map pockets, power windows, uh, power door locks. This is actually the rear window goes up and down on this baby. And this one works on mine. It's sometimes, you know, has some issues on some people. And it's kind of like, you know, it's a, it's an older vehicle. It looks looks kind of, kind of old school. So this is the main, it's kind of the main issue. The, driver's seat, the seam like ripped, got a little tear right there, but all the power works nicely. This one actually was kind of uh, jacked up. It was only reclining on one side. So the rod that goes through, I had to pull it apart, push the rod back over. So now everything works actually. So seats nice. They're nothing, they're nothing to write home about. Relatively comfortable. They do have armrests for both the front seats, which is nice. I did swap the floor mats out for weather techs. And then we can't forget one of the best features, which I don't understand why I still didn't carry over to modern vehicles, is this vent right here. We'll call it the crotchular ventilator, the ball cooler, the between the legs 
aerator. I don't know what you want to call it, but this vent right here, when you can't have cooled seats, this is the next best thing. And inside bone stock. So what I'm going to do here is actually change the receiver. I'm going to put a, like a super, super cheap, basically the cheapest one I could find a uh, unit that does Apple CarPlay. I'm actually putting in a nine inch like a boss unit because I just don't really care too much. I just want a big screen and I'm going to put a reverse camera and it's going to have CarPlay. So that is going to be sweet. But right now we just kind of have obviously an old school. This is just the OEM original sound system. Now I did say earlier this was an SR5, but it has leather heated power seats. Also does have the JBL audio, but doesn't have any of the wood trim or anything. The Sequoias are pretty nice because there's a bunch of just hard plastic. Now that kind of feels cheap, I guess, but it's just durable. So just like this thing like looks pretty good for its age, not a lot of stuff wearing down. And apparently uh, a thing that plagues a lot of Toyotas is cracked um, kind of parts up here from the sun. Sequoias I don't think really crack ever, so that's kind of nice. So in here, nice and roomy. We do have a stock shifter here. No shifter or anything down here. Down here is the four wheel drive button. So this is, has uh, actually in the 2005 and up as well, actually has a torsion uh, center differential. So that's kind of an upgrade for the 2005 and plus in addition to the better engine and everything there. But by default, you know, it's a rear wheel drive vehicle. So two wheel drive, you can pop it into four high, you can pop it into four low, and you can also, it does have a center differential locker as well. I don't know what's going on with the focus here. Other than that, basic kind of climate control stuff up here. Mine, again, SR5 doesn't have any fancy features. Here's where you, where you might find buttons for, like, they did have some of the limiteds had auto height control um, and things like that. This one doesn't. Very basic. Some people swap that out for a cubby. I can't find a cubby. I'd probably swap it out for a cubby because, again, I'm not planning to do a crazy, crazy build on this. But I'll tell you more about builds plans in the future. Up here, pretty sweet. Ashtray, dope. Um, there's a theme here, actually older cars, there's just a lot of stuff geared towards smokers. Ashtrays everywhere and stuff like that. And this vehicle has five cigarette lighters in it, five. And I actually have no complaints about that. So it's got one there, it's got two over there. It's got one down here, this is I can't actually see the screen. Hopefully I'm pointing in the right direction, but this is basically the back seat. It's got one there and it's got one in the back that I'll show you later. So up here, it's kind of got this stupid little thing. You can set your phone there or whatever. I haven't looked into really, you know, ways to utilize this space better. The mirror controls kind of weird. They're here in the center as well. And the heated seats kind of weird in the center as well here. One of the six things about this car is fits an Algene bottle right in there perfectly. Great fit. So two cup holders here. And actually up here as well, we got two more cup holders that pull out. So four cup holders up front. Very nice. Glove box, pretty standard, not bad. Like I mentioned earlier, the map pockets, power seats, and then it's got kind of this interesting uh, center console. So this is enough room to, you know, put put some junk in here I actually cut out a little kind of foam mat so when I put stuff here it's not like rattling around this is a little clipboard you can you know take notes or whatever right on here I probably will never use that feature and then it has a bigger console down here so I just have you know a basic toolkit here a little bushcraft knife and actually this little thing uh, this little random thing here that I had actually in my 60 series Land Cruiser, which I haven't been driving, so I just kind of stole it out of that and put it into this center console. It's just got a lot of really nice organizational stuff in this little cheap Amazon thing. I'll link to all this stuff, as I always do, down in the video description below. But that kind of, it's hard to do one-handed here. This knife got in the way. But that fits very nicely in this center console. Pretty roomy center console. If you got the limited, you'll have a DVD player in here probably as well that controls a DVD player that's up there. 
mine actually one of the previous owners must have added a dvd player up there and that's all integrated within itself so you put the dvd player you put the dvd in up there and handle everything this one does also have a moonroof with a massive scratch here but the moonroof is pretty big i mean it's a really big moonroof for the era massive actually but not panoramic obviously older one this is actually a nice little thing shows temperature direction you can have it show a couple other things like uh, fuel economy miles to empty all that stuff i did swap out all of the bulbs to led so sunglass holder here uh, does have these visors that have the part that like slides out for extra sun protection so um and it does have home link as well which is nice so uh, pretty basic up here, but has kind of everything that I need. Even has a couple of steering wheel controls on here. Does have cruise control as well, and lights and wipers and rear wiper control. So, kind of has everything I want from you know a vehicle of this era. I always try to opt for heated seats when I can, and this has them so that's kind of what's going on up front then in the back actually this these seats can recline a little bit and there's a bunch of room there's a bunch of like leg room back here is like pretty pretty spacious to be honest and then a little map pocket over here like i mentioned earlier a lot of smokers back in the day ashtrays everywhere two big cup holders back here which is nice and then dedicated rear um, controls for heating and cooling. I think in the limited even, there are rear heated seats, but mine doesn't have that. Pockets back here. Again, WeatherTech mat. Everything pretty nice. Has vents in the ceilings and in the floors and in the ceilings for the back row as well. So this is the second row. Pretty nice, pretty spacious. It does have a little armrest that folds down. No cup holders in the armrest, unfortunately, but pretty nice overall. On this side, this will flip it forward and this will pull it. So this is a 60-40 a split. But this side, you pull this up to get to the back. So that flips up and then you have access to the third row back there. So over on this side of the middle row, the second row, it's actually just a one lever process to fold and flip up. It does have a little strap here that you can hook to the grab handle for like securing it fully all the way up. Dual grab handles back here, nice and proper. So then we get back here. Oh, actually here there's a little storage compartment. This is just where mine anyway has like the jack and spare tire tools and everything, but like a fair bit of, a fair bit of room underneath there. And you can see some vents for the third row. And then we'll get back here into the third row. So third row does have technically seating for three, uh, shoulder strap seat belts for three. The middle one is kind of tucked up there. And back here we have two cup holders on each side. So four total in the back, a little cubby back in here, a little cubby over here again the vent grab handles and same thing on this side and when i'm back here not like gobs and gobs of room but i could honestly sit back here pretty comfortably and you know it's pretty nice for a third row and then one of the things that break a lot is this handle mine is still working luckily so uh, i'll report back when that does break on me and then in the back, the nice thing about the Sequoia is the space behind the third row. Uh, in the Land Cruisers, even the 200 series Land Cruiser, which is a little bit bigger than the 100 series, this is probably about half. So in behind the third row on a Land Cruiser, you can't store much. In a Sequoia, granted it's not a ton of room, but you could fit like eight people and all of their carry-on luggage and maybe a little bit more back here honestly. So this, these seats actually, I'll show you how they function here in a little bit. You can tilt them up, slide them forward and pull them out very easily. There's some little spots here to tie a little net. There's some tie down spots in the rear. 
And then there's uh, like bags for groceries or there's hooks for like grocery bags or whatever. And then there's this little compartment that pulls off. There's a company that actually sells like a little molly panel you can put there if you prefer. And then back in here, there's actually a fair bit of storage. So you just have a jump starter, a little air compressor, a little med kit back in here. This is a cool little spot that like actually goes like way, way in here. So this little kind of storage nook is pretty sweet. Now what this doesn't have that the Land Cruisers do have is a tailgate. This has no tailgate, but this bumper is actually, if you can tell, really large. So this bumper actually makes a great seat. So no tailgate, but a nice bumper to sit on. So, you know, could be worse. Now, so over here we have this little guy that folds the seat down like so. And then here's kind of some instructions on how to use this stuff. But basically this one here will slide the seat forward. So if you want a little bit more room here, granted when you do slide the seat forward, you basically have no leg room back there. And this is actually what tumbles, this one is what tumbles the seat forward. So that lifts it and then you can tumble that seat forward like that to get a bunch more room back here. All right, so back here where is where things are kind of cool. I, I like that, that I prefer over the Land Cruiser. Kind of like I talked about, a little more storage, you have more room back here. The third row, I'm actually gonna keep in, unlike a lot of people. A lot of people would delete the third row and they just have like a big SUV with a lot of storage, which is cool. Um, but again, this is kind of a hauler, people mover, whatever. Like primarily so far, this vehicle has been used for my big family that was visiting carrying around a bunch of people. So I'll probably leave a third row in most of the time. But the thing I like about it is it's very easy to remove. So in the Land Cruiser, it's a little bit of a pain, bunch of bolts to undo. In the LX, it's very much a pain. I never actually removed it, but I heard it takes like 30 to 45 minutes to remove them from the LX. With this though, it's super simple. So you flick this up, move that red thing, and then just basically pull the whole seat out. Now these seats are kind of heavy. But just like that, uh, the seat is out. So you can take half of the seat out very easily, obviously. The other one comes out just as easily. So the thing that's kind of cool and unique about the Sequoia is once the third row is out and the second row is folded up like that side, this distance interior is completely flat and it's over six feet. Uh, I don't know exactly, I should probably measure it. I've, I've heard it's like six and a half feet. I think it's just shy of that, but a little over six feet so you can sleep in here while keeping the second row in and doing nothing. You don't have to build a sleeping platform. You don't have to do anything like that. You just flip those seats forward, boom. You can sleep in the back. So very cool feature of the Sequoia. So mine I only got with one key and one fob. I like that the fob's actually really small here. Uh, I bought a new key and a fob on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks and you can program it yourself. It's kind of a chip key, but you can program it with a series of lock, unlock, lock, unlock, insert the key, take the key out, open the door, and you can program it. So that worked for me. I just followed what was in the comments here. And then you can close this, and then I'll show you real quick the rear window. So you can actually open it and close it with the key as well. So we turn it in and we flip it to this side and the window rolls down. So the roll down rear window is a beloved feature in the Tundras as well as the Forerunners and surprise, surprise, the Sequoias have it as well. This SR5 does also have the spoiler, which I think is usually on the Limiteds. But yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty good condition vehicle. Again, you can shop around for these if you, if you have patience, which I don't have, or if you have time, which I, I didn't have either because I needed to get a vehicle <laughs> in the next few days for my family to use. But you can get better deals than this. I basically was like, I got to get a Sequoia. I looked on Craigslist, found about five that were in the price range I was looking for. I could have got one. Actually, I went and test drove one total piece of crap, but I could have got that one for $4,500. Uh, and then I would have just had to spend a lot of time fixing things up and cleaning it up. I actually spent a lot of time cleaning this one up. So again, these can be had for cheaper. Like I didn't, this this wasn't a crazy good deal that I got on this. I, I, 
I would say that it's not even that good of a deal, especially compared to like a year or two back. But got this for seven grand. So if you have a good amount of patience, you can get these, you can get great deals on these. Granted, you couldn't get the deals you could get like two years ago. And that's just largely due to chip shortage and used car prices going crazy and Toyota tax and all that kind of stuff. Some people are like, oh, the secret sale, the Sequoia, everyone thinks it's a great vehicle now. I mean, I think everyone kind of thought, it's not like a sleeper of a vehicle. There's no like new surprises about the Sequoia that haven't been known forever, but used car prices are crazy in general. So I paid seven grand for this again, salvage title, 200,000 miles on it. Not amazing condition, but not horrible either. So I didn't, I didn't get ripped off, I don't think, but I definitely didn't get a great deal on this. And the reason was because I, well, A, I don't have patience and I also didn't have time. I needed a vehicle like that weekend. So I basically looked on uh, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace and stuff and found about four vehicle, four Sequoia, four wheel drive Sequoias that were in my in the price range I was looking for. Uh, but you could shop around uh, if, I mean, I, I always would get a four wheel drive one, the two wheel drive ones are quite a bit cheaper and depending on where you live, you may be able to find them cheaper as well. And you can certainly find them in better condition with lower miles, but you can also find them with a ton of miles and in worse condition. So kind of depending on your budget, what you're looking for, how patient you are, you might be able to find a great deal on these. And I think they're just kind of, you know, I think they look all right. I think the first gens look better than the second gens. The, the second gens just kind of look like a manatee or some weird blob to me, the first gens kind of just look like a bigger uh, fourth gen forerunner to me. And they kind of have similar design cues to a hundred series Land Cruiser. So I, I think, I think the first gen Sequoia is a handsome, is a handsome rig. Uh, so let's talk about what I'm going to do to it. So one of the major complaints for the Sequoias is lack of aftermarket support. Uh, a lot of Sequoia owners were cheering when I bought one because they're hoping I can help boost the aftermarket for them. I'm just one guy. I don't think I can do much, but I'll try my best guys. I'll try my best for you Sequoia guys, because I think this is a great vehicle for kind of overlanding, light overlanding, or if you kind of want to spend a little bit of money and beef up some of the components, you can do some pretty good wheeling uh, on these things. Again, it's basically a Tundra. Some of the components are shared with the Land Cruiser, so it's definitely no slouch of a vehicle. Now with every vehicle, there kind of comes a sweet spot. So for the, for like a Tacoma, I think that sweet spot is a couple inches of lift and 33 inch tires. For a Tundra, I think that's a couple inches of lift and 35 inch tires. For the Sequoia, I think it's a couple inches of lift and 33 inch tires. So you have kind of small wheel wells here. You can't fit, fit a much bigger tire than stock on these Sequoias without them rubbing pretty bad here. So I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna remove this mud flap. I'm gonna hack up the pinch weld there. I'm gonna clear up as much room as possible. But from what I read on forums, you can't even fit a 33 inch tire on these without lifting it, without some serious rub. Granted, if you're a pavement princess, I think you can, but if you're taking it off road, I don't even think you can fit a 33 inch tire with no lift, which you know, isn't super uncommon. You can't really do that on a Tacoma either. So I, my plan is to put a two inch lift on here and I'm gonna keep this thing relatively budget. Granted, I'm not doing like full crazy budget build. I'm not buying $30 shocks off Amazon and random this or that, but I'm gonna keep it I'm going to keep it budget for you guys. I'll probably put a, a roof rack on top. Again, I'm going to do a two inch lift. Two inch lift is the sweet spot on these. I'll talk more in a future video, but two inch lift is the amount of lift that you can do and do the least to get it up there. And I'm not going to do a spacer lifts uh, because a lot of the suspension components and the bushings and stuff are pretty tired and worn out. So I'd want to replace those anyway. Uh, and rather than just replace them with OEM components, I might as well lift it at that time. And then I'm going to leave the sway bars on, but I'm going to extend them, maybe do a little bit more. But that, that's basically the plan for this vehicle. Put it on uh, 33 inch tires, I think 285, 70 R17s or something like that. I have the wheels and tires, I ordered the lift kit, so I'll be transforming this thing very soon. So you can kind of look forward to that. And that is about it. I'm not planning to do much more. Again, I talked about kind of my reason for owning this vehicle in the beginning. So that is gonna be just enough to do everything that I wanna do 
with this rig. So then I'll take it out on some adventures. Granted, the Tacoma is still going to be my primary adventure rig. I have the van, I have the Tundra, I have my Land Cruisers. So this will kind of fit into the mix as, you know, just just a hauler of sorts. So comment down below what you'd like to see, what you're interested in, what questions you have. I'll do some follow-up videos on this. I'll outline some of the basic build that I do as well and kind of talk more about that stuff in that future video. I just kind of wanted to introduce you to the Sequoia. People in the Sequoia community uh, basically call it a tree. <laughs> they call it the, the tree. Oh, I got my tree today or I just did a lift on my tree uh, because obviously Sequoia is a big tree. So yeah, and the Sequoia community seems pretty rad so far. I think in the Overland space, it's definitely going to be a growing vehicle as the price is right, has a solid engine, it's reliable, has tons of room. The 4.7 seems to have enough power for everything. Definitely in stock form, seems to have plenty of power. We'll see how it does with 33s and a 2-inch lift. I'll report back then. But so far, very stoked on this Sequoia. And then one thing I really like about the Sequoia so far is like the community, honestly, like the community, from what I can tell from kind of how I was welcomed on Instagram and DMs and everything, seems like a very nice community, not a bunch of D-bags in the Sequoia community yet anyway. Hopefully we keep it that way, right? So Sequoia community, really cool. Love it. A lot of pros, a lot of things to love. Do I think it's a good budget overlander? Yeah, I mean, uh, budget is very relative. I think it's priced right for the features that you get. I think either if you have a big family or just want to haul a bunch of gear or have a bunch of dogs or just, you need a bigger vehicle for one reason or another and you don't care about the fuel economy because it doesn't get good fuel economy but no big SUVs really do, then something definitely definitely worth looking into. You can get it relatively cheap. You can do a little bit of maintenance on it and get it very reliable. Uh, a lot of times people have already done this maintenance. So if you can buy one that already has this maintenance done, then that'll be good for probably a long time. And then I think you can throw just a little bit of money at it. Like my lift all in again, I'll talk more about this in a future video, but like a full lift, not a spacer lift, not cheap pieces of crap, like mentioned, but like a legitimate lift kit. I think it was like, just over a thousand dollars. So I'll talk more about that in a future video. I'm gonna actually just, keeping with the whole budget-minded thing, I'm actually just gonna install the lift here in my driveway, kind of walk you through the whole thing. I'm sure I'm gonna hate it. I'm sure I'm gonna bust my knuckles. I've tried to quit. Like I spend my whole life working in my driveway on vehicles, rain, shine, cold, heat, and I just don't really have time for it and I don't really enjoy it anymore. But for this one, just keeping true to fashion, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the whole, I'll kind of walk you, it's not gonna be an install video because I hate doing those, but you'll see a little bit of the install. I'll kind of talk through the pain points and then I'll show you the final product. So that'll probably be like, that'll probably be the next video. But I got a lot of stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. I gotta actually do a handful of things, get a couple trucks ready for Overland Expo West. So I'm doing a few things to the Tacoma that I gotta knock out and I'm probably gonna do those things myself. And then I'm gonna do a couple of things to the Tundra, which I'm probably gonna do those things myself as well. So I got a busy next couple of weeks and maybe I'll see you down at Overland Expo West. I'll have the Tacoma in the KC Highlights booth, the Tundra in the Diamondback Covers booth. I'll be kind of floating around between the two, but I'll try to post kind of like some times that I'll be at both if you wanna just like meet me and hang out and chat about sequoias or, or whatever. Uh, so hope to chat with you soon then. And yeah, leave comments down below what you wanna see, what you have questions about, what you recommend if you have one of these as well. Uh, and yeah, until next time guys, take care.